question. Hello. Oh, <laughs> hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first CAD chat ever. Um, I'm Emily Hamrin. I am a fifth year Cal Poly architecture student um, graduating in 2020. And this is Fareed Shaheed. Uh, Fareed, could you introduce yourself a little? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me uh, on this lovely show. Looking forward to being a part of it. Uh, my name is Fareed Shaheed. Uh, I'm a Cal Poly architecture alum from 2016 and currently co-founder at 8020 Group. We're a real estate brokerage in uh, San Luis Obispo, located here in downtown. And I'm also on the board of directors for Downtown Slow. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so I guess the first question I have is, um, how have you found your path founding 8020 Group? Sure, yeah, 8020 Group, you know, we founded the company uh, about a year ago, actually. It was March of 2019. Um, it kind of came to be uh, through my work at another real estate company here in town. And uh, pretty much I was there for uh, about four years. And through those experiences and the people I met and some of the partners that I was working with over time, we decided to take the leap and start our own real estate brokerage. And we've been around now for about a year, like I was saying, and we're just under 10 people. So it's been a great year of growth and we're working on a lot of exciting projects right now and, and many more to come in the future. Mm -hmm. So what skill did you find essential for leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself? Uh, you know, I mean, I think generally in business, um, the most critical skill to have is just adaptability, you know? The world changes a lot every day, and I think you can see that pretty, pretty, you know, uh, keenly during the whole COVID crisis happening. And a lot of companies are able to swiftly adapt and step up as leaders. And a lot of companies are kind of quietly going into the shadows and becoming not very relevant. Um, I think it's more relevant for restaurants right now. You can kind of see half the restaurants have disappeared, half have you know, restructured their businesses to provide value to the community in different ways. So I'd say adaptability is one, uh, creativity, and just critical thinking. You know, I think in school, uh, a lot of the times you're taught to just follow the rules and just kind of do this. It's, it's a very linear approach. And I think one of the best things about architecture school is it's, it's not a very linear major. It's a very uh, creative one. And there's a lot of you know, uh, answers to the same question. And there's a lot of solutions for the same problem. And some of the best things about the major is that, you know, we're not doing these multiple choice uh, questions, we're doing studio projects. And that really lets you dive deep into the problems and provide, you know, really unique solutions towards them. And that mindset translates very well to many things, including business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Um, I guess you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would you say your greatest challenges were, like both as an architecture student and then after you came into the professional world? Yeah, I mean, I'd say, you know, when you're a student, you're, you're basically just trying to absorb as much information. And at times it can be like drinking from a fire, you know, hydrant. And I think every year that I was in school during architecture, a lot of it was just like just figuring out how stuff works you know you're kind of assigned these these grandiose projects and you have to you know as a as an 18 year old 20 year old you have to design an entire airport or train station or a house and you know these are huge challenges and i think you know when you're in school you just don't know a lot of these larger things that come into play to actually design these things and because of that you're able to come up with really fun solutions and mm -hmm. I think uh, it's just a balance of like being really creative and fun and coming up with um, really interesting solutions to these design challenges. And then each year as you progress through the program, you know a little bit more about the politics behind it, the construction, the financing, and all these challenges that come into the real world that might either prohibit or help your, your design as, a, as an architect. So I think, you know, the the biggest challenge was just the surrounding knowledge of what goes on in the whole world of architecture from a from a holistic ecosystem and not just the one task at hand and, and that's natural to any major right you're studying whatever it is you're studying 
and there's a big push to focus on that. But realistically, when you're doing that job in the world, you have to interact with other people and in other industries. So you kind of have to know how that works. And for me personally, I was really intrigued and interested by the, the politics of architecture, you know, because you can have a cool design, but how do you translate that into a city council meeting and sell it to the city, to the county, right? There's the financing aspect of it. How do you, how do you talk to, you know, Wells Fargo or Chase or whatever bank you're working with to do a construction loan? And how do you make that project pencil, you know, with the interest rates and with the, the loan structure and all these things, right? None of it has to do with architecture, but it very heavily affects architecture. And if you can navigate some of those challenges uh, in a creative and swift way, you can actually design and build whatever it is you want, you know, within reason and actually get stuff through. And I think that's what really makes a really successful developer or a contractor, architect, whatever, whatever your role is in the industry is just really understanding the, the greater picture and not just being kind of in a silo focusing on whatever you have to do. And for me being in real estate, you know, we have to know a lot about real estate, but we also have to know how architects work, how contractors work. We have to be very in tune with the city, zoning, planning, all those things, you know? So I, I always suggest whenever I talk to students um, is to take a little bit of time outside of studio and not just be, you know, li living there literally and step away from your studio environment because your, your design's gonna work out just fine. You know, don't, don't freak out about some of these crazy deadlines, just get it done, but also keep in mind other factors at play. Because if you really wanna add value, it's not just about creating nice renderings and cool floor plans. It's about mm -hmm. getting it built, getting it financed and getting it passed in a, in a political atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, I'd say that really resonates with me too, with architecture. I mean, it took me up until my fifth year to start learning about the professional practice. And it's a little scary, to be honest. So I don't, I'm a little nervous about taking those first steps into the real world after graduating, where it's not all about the cool uh, money shot, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and some of those practice classes were my favorite. I mean, you know, you, there's obviously all kinds of uh, flavors of architecture students and a big chunk mm -hmm. of them. A big, a big percentage of people you'll meet, I think, are going to be the, the designer types and the people who want to be the next, you know, designer. But, you know, realistically, when you look at the breakdown of a firm and a, the breakdown of all the people involved to build something, the actual artists are a much smaller percentage of it uh, relative to everything else. So not everyone who graduates architecture is going to be the next Frank Gehry. So yeah. I think you just have to be realistic with that. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's okay, but, you know, it's uh, there's it's just it's just as it's just uh, okay, I think, to aspire to be um, someone who's more focused on the project management or the or the financing or the business side of it, just as much as it is to aspire to be the next big designer, because you need all those, you know, to to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I think sometimes in studio culture, it's looked down upon to to not want to be the designer, but be focused more on other things. But that's, and that's okay. You know, you just kind of have to um, realize what you're into and be confident with it and defend it. Because when I was at Cal Poly, I was not involved with a lot of the design related activities or clubs. Um, I was hanging out in the College of Business for all my extracurriculars and clubs. Oh, okay. So that's how it brought you into eighty twenty, right? To the focus exactly. on the business side instead of oh, okay, interesting. Exactly. So it I looks like that. we've got one minute to go. So I guess I'll just wrap up with saying, you know, if you go to Cal Poly right now and you're in the architecture major and you're interested in, you know, any other area of expertise outside of design, don't be afraid to follow that that desire and look at other resources both on campus and, and off campus to to educate yourself on that and surround yourself by people that are going to help you kind of get to that level so if you're interested in finance like go meet and hang out with finance students and go network with professionals in town that do that for a living because graduation comes up real quick and if you don't really have you know, a holistic plan on how you're going to get there and you're just thinking about it, it's going to be a lot harder to pivot and transition into that 
versus gradually approaching it while you're in school. So that would be my advice. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my last question. So I guess it wraps up pretty well. Um, yeah. So you said we have one minute left, or I guess. I think that was it. <laughs> okay, well, <Yeah. laughs> thank everyone for looking at our first CAED chat or CAD chat, I guess. Um, more to come. <laughs> thank you for Thanks, your... <laughs> Emily.